the Prime Minister for the next three minutes. So tell me, what would you do with the NHS? Um, I think one of the first things that I might do is tackle like prescription costs. Okay. Um, so maybe each time a patient comes in to collect their prescription, sure. or like the first time they're prescribed a new drug, they're given a leaflet on how much oh, okay. the drug costs. And what impact do you think that will have? Um, so I think if they see sort of how expensive drugs are, they might be more inclined to take their drugs and not to waste NHS resources. Mm. Oh, I see. Well, what do you yeah. think one of the problems with that could be? Um, I guess on the flip side, some medications aren't very expensive to manufacture, um, and then the patient would see that they're paying like yeah, eight pounds. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's a great idea, though. I completely get what you're saying. Yeah. What about another thing? Maybe another way to save money. What could you do? Um, I think another thing that might be a good idea would be to standardise the softwares that are used in all okay. the trusts. Could you expand on that? I don't. Really yeah. Understand. So I think even within a trust different hospitals might be using different software for like imaging or oh, drug prescriptions or um, patient notes but if everyone was to use the same software then you'd save money. So is that the whole of the UK uses one kind of program for x-rays, one for CTs, is that what you're saying? Yeah because then um, every time a doctor goes to a new hospital or any other healthcare staff they don't have to retrain to use their software okay. and then you save money. What do you way. think about certain hospitals that obviously have different budgets and you know some hospitals for example UCH specialise in cancer mm -hmm. they might have special proton beam therapy that other hospitals aren't used to. Mm -hmm. Do you think that could be a problem? Yeah I suppose that's very true um, so I'm not we don't have to standardise it you know so completely like each trust can then sort of tweak it so that sure. it's specific to theirs like even varying parts of the UK there's varying resistance to different um, bacteria and other good, organisms. Good. Yeah. That sounds good. So moving on, so we've talked about saving money. How would you, say for example, you had you know, 100 million pounds or whatever, mm -hmm. how would you, what would you invest a greater proportion of the budget on? Um, I think it would be very useful to, to spend more money on public health campaigns. Okay. Um, so really trying to improve a patient's knowledge of their own healthcare and how to encourage self-care in the sense that sure. they know when to take action and when it's less convenient and less appropriate. So for could them. you give an example of what we what public health England could do? Um, so maybe, um, maybe so in a similar way to as how to how they do it with like cigarettes and they have like a picture of how how bad it can be for like your lungs yeah, and stuff. Yeah. They could do a similar thing with um, with alcohol um, because. Obviously, a huge um, intake in patient A and E and stuff is like alcohol. Sure, access. sure. But do you not think there's an issue with people thinking that we're a nanny state? Should the government have a say in what we drink, what we eat? I think um, it wouldn't be like very kind of empirical. It'd just be moderation is key. Um, I think like British culture isn't to like not drink at all. Mm -hmm. So it would just be to kind of inform people of the like negative effects sure. of drinking in excess. Sure. I understand. Thank you very much. Um, that concludes this station and good luck for the rest of the interview. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this free tutorial from Medic Mind. To unlock a hundred tutorials on topics such as MMI, Oxbridge, NHS structure, work experience, personality and much more, click here now.